Let me hit you hit one wrong one. Good. What's going on guys? Shayway here from Shayway Tech. Today I'm actually wanting to share with you guys how I am converting all of my home videos that were from VHS back in the 90s to digital videos. When I was younger, my family used to record basically everything. If there was a family get together or a birthday party or just a reason for us to turn on the camera, my family would do it. These videos allow me to get a glimpse of what it was like when I was younger. So I wanted to make sure that I took those videos and I had them safely stored on a digital format. There's a ton of companies out there that will take your VHS tapes, Hi8 tapes, basically old formats and convert them to digital for you. But me being a techie, I wanted to do it myself. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I converted VHS tapes to digital format and the tools that you'll need in case you want to do it yourself. So to get this started, let's go ahead and look at some of the tools that you will need to purchase in order to start this. So there are two Amazon purchases that I made for this process, one of them being a capture card. In this case, I used an Elgato Cam Link. Keep in mind that Elgato Cam Links are a little bit expensive and there are alternatives out there that are roughly around $20 that you could purchase online. Just make sure to check the reviews to make sure the capture card that you are using uh, is good quality and it will give you the best result possible. Next up, I bought a AV to HDMI adapter. This guy was literally like 12 bucks on Amazon. Keep in mind, I'm going to link a lot of this stuff down in the description below with affiliate links. So if you decide to do this process, I would appreciate it if you would use those links as it does help out the channel. But you can upscale any sort of old video from 720p to 1080p. Of course, I moved this little switch over to the 1080p slide here. That way I got the best quality available. And to be honest with you, the quality is really good for it to be upscaled from a older style video. So that's the two pieces of hardware that you will need to purchase. Of course, you'll need an HDMI cable to connect the AV adapter to the cam link, but most of us have these laying around the house. You'll also need one piece of software called OBS. It works on Windows, Mac, Linux, you name it. It's a free download online, and I will link that below for you to get as well. So I'm gonna show you a poorly drawn diagram and kind of talk you through how this process is set up. So of course you have your VCR or whatever your main medium is. Of course, if you have a camcorder with high eight tapes, that works as well. As long as you have the yellow, white, red RCA cables, you will be good to go. Uh, basically you wanna plug that in to the uh, AV adapter. And then the AV adapter is going to run HDMI into the cam link. And the cam link is going to be seen in the OBS software as a video capture device. So you basically just import that into OBS software and then click record. While that's recording, you can go on and press play on the VCR. So this is basically seen as a camera in OBS. So everything that this is recording is what this is displaying. So after saving this, it saves it as a MKV file or a MP4, however you choose, and it will be able to be output to wherever you want to use it. For that process, I highly recommend that you save these files as a MKV, especially when you are going to be making longer clips. For instance, I have VHS tapes that are literally hours long and I would make one huge cut of it. If it were to die halfway through or the computer crash or something like that, if I'm recording as an MP4, that file becomes corrupted and I can no longer use it. Whereas if you save as a MKV, this file will just cut off and you will have up to that point. I bumped my Mike, I got so excited about that. So I highly recommend if you're not familiar with the way OBS works to look at a tutorial for OBS. There, There's a ton of features to it and it can be a little overwhelming. So much that you can look at, it probably isn't best for me to try to get into OBS on this video specifically because it's a whole nother monster. Um, that being said, the setup can be very easy as long as you understand how it works. So I do wanna share with you the settings that I use to get the best quality for my home videos. Of course, this may differ depending on what kind of system you're using and of course the graphics card that you have built into your machine. So first I'm going to pull up my uh, just standard settings here for you to see and I took a little screenshot of it. So 
Uh, under the output, under the recording tab, I have the type set to standard. And then of course I've set the audio path to just an external hard drive that I have. And then the recording format, like I said, I'm using MKV and I have the audio track set to just one track. I only need one track on this. The encoder, I decided to use the NVIDIA NVENC. That way it doesn't task my computer as much. And the big heavy lifting is done with my graphics card. That being said, if you do not have this available, you could just use the X264, which is using your CPU. Uh, just keep in mind that your computer probably doesn't need to be trying to run other things while it's recording because it could call stutters or anything like that in the output file. Uh, I don't have rescale resolution because I have the default resolution uh, under video set to 1080p and the rate control. So this is something that I had to play around with. I found that if I kept it at 10,000 bit rate and a constant bit rate or CBR here, I got the best results. The key interval I've set to two. Um, that's just basically what everyone recommends for whatever platform you're streaming on. So I kind of just left it at that. And for the preset, of course, I tried to do the maximum quality or max quality. Profile is main and cycle visual tuning I turned on. This is going to, this actually lets the CPU or GPU try to look ahead to see how they can make the bitrate look better. I don't really foresee this making a big difference for uh, VCR videos or anything that's already pre-recorded, but I left it on just for the time being. And the max B frame rates I put at two, uh, GPU at zero. So this is the video settings that I used, and now I'm going to show you the audio settings of how I had it set up. So before I go into this, I really wanna point out that whenever you're adding a video capture device into OBS, it does not support audio. So you have to figure out a way to get your audio from your capture card also into OBS. In this case, I used it as a microphone input. And so I'm gonna show you the audio settings of how I did that, and it will make a little bit more sense. So the audio settings tab here, I left the sample rate at 48 kilohertz. Uh, desktop audio is the same. It's always at my headphones because I usually use headphones while I'm recording. But what really matters is the Audio 2. So the Audio 2 is the digital audio interface or my Camlink 4K, which is the Elgato capture card. So this is where you would want to put whatever your capture card that you're using as the mic. This will allow you to uh, have the audio in the file as well. Of course, you can put it in the main auxiliary, but I tend to use a microphone a lot, so I didn't want to change that. So I left my, uh, my audio interface here. I made absolutely no other changes. What you see here is what it is always set at. Uh, I did not make any other changes to the audio. It's just important that you have the main auxiliary, or excuse me, the mic auxiliary set to the cam link. So you have the audio from your VHS or wherever you're recording available in the video. I made the mistake at first of not adding the audio and the first pass I did was about an hour long and I had an hour long video with absolutely no audio. So please make sure that you do this and that you do like a five minute test before you go and publish this. So guys, that's how I'm converting all my VHS tapes. I have a stack of probably a hundred that I have to go through. I've gone through maybe three of them because it is a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. It takes a while to go through them. What that means is when you press play on the VCR, that's when you hit record on OBS and they just play simultaneously and record simultaneously. So it can take a very long time depending on how much footage that you have actually have, but it is a uh, process that I am willing to take to make sure that I do not lose any of these memories. So guys, I hope this helps you. And if you have any questions about this process, if you start to do it, uh, I'd be happy to answer them down in the comment section below so make sure to drop those there if you have any ideas for future videos also post them there um, that being said if you start to purchase tools for this process i would really appreciate it if you decided to use the affiliate links linked below uh, that helps the channel out and allows me to keep making content like this so thanks so much again for watching the video my name is shayway and we'll see you next time on shayway tech